This week's Parsha of Era, we have the four expressions, uh, terms of Geula, of redemption, that we'll be reviewing in Yitz Hashem in the, uh, in the Haggadah. Much to talk about that, obviously, and uh, we'll... Uh, We'll come back to that in Yitz Hashem, the Chasdei Hashem. Adkan alavai vaita. So the first, uh, Reb Meir Simcha talks about the correspondence between the different terms of the Gula and the four kosos, the four cups that we drink at the at the Seder. Vohotzeiti. He correlates with plucking, extracting one nation from another nation. There had to be a definitive difference between one and the other. They were embedded within the, the body general of the, of the Egyptian people, how to, how to extract them. So there had to be a sense of kedusha of sanctity that they were defined as another as another entity a separate entity so that the first lotion of hotseti corresponds to kiddush that's the kiddusha of amyosel there really is no english word for the word kiddusha it's dedicated for a higher purpose for a different purpose uh, exclusively uh, much discussion but we approximate in in english kiddush then we have vitsalti vitsalti i saved now saved says or simcha you have to be able to differentiate between the the terrorist the murderer the pursuer and the pursuit, most violence occurs around uh, matters of, uh, of sustenance. So the, in order to differentiate between the Rodef and the Nirdof, that, that brocha for Hitzalti, the save to be able to define who is the Nirdof, who is being chased and by whom, then that was fixed on Birkas Hamozon, on the thanking the Rebani Shlalem for our uh, daily, uh, daily sustenance. And then everything, all Panasa, all livelihood, is, comes from the Rebani Shlalem. It's not uh, man-made. And therefore, that should lead to less violence between people there's already uh, the Mephoshim uh, the differentiate that Elohim uh, Yivakesh Rebbeinishom chooses, determines who is the Rodef and who is the Nildof that Elohim, the Rebbeinishom knows who's the frequently uh, as uh, many leftists uh, invariably switch the, uh, the victim and the uh, and the culprit the Rebbe Nishlam knows who is uh, who is the victim. So that's the first we the two lashinas v'hotzeisi kedusha that's on kiddush v'hitzalti uh, to save the pursued the one who is being chased from his chaser from his pursuer, and that is because I'm awesome, because if one recognizes, if everybody would recognize that all Panos is Libanishan, we're just, uh, our, uh, our mandate is just to do his shtadlus, to endeavor to do, to reduce the, it shouldn't be a nest nigla, it should be a nest nista by us doing his shtadlus, as the Chavis Avovus explains at length in the Shara Bitochen. 
then is goalti to redeem redeem that uh, an evid says a mea simcha an evid has a frequently is chazal analyze the mental state is that he's he's happy in his state of have chaos uh, of uh, licentiousness license of licentiousness within the uh, that that world of avdus and without responsibility ultimately so he'll suffer it through is the the negative part for the upside for him that's because he has no sense of history no sense of yichus where he comes from the evid by definition that's what an evid is he has no sense of history and that coast is fixed says Ramey Simcha on the first half of Halel which is a description of Klayasol's roots in the in the Ovis and history and the fourth bracha velokachti to take unto me that's that's Klayasol did not forfeit a sense of language language the only point in keeping the language as yosef says when he identifies himself to them uh, by speaking hebrew by speaking loshin kaidish then language has significance if it, there's going to be a future if there's no future then what do i need the language for it's a nation it's a nation with language a nation means that it is it came from someplace and it's going someplace that's the future so those are the four lashonas of gula according to mermea simcha the he continues on in the the parsha mermea simcha say that moshe and aaron came with their shlichus to to Bnei Yisrael when they were elderly. As elderly statesmen, they are less suspect of having an agenda because they're closer to what has been described as final exams. So generally speaking, there's more credibility for the elder statesmen. And the Torah goes to great lengths to record those who rebelled against them. It was from Shevet Ruven, the Dosan Vaviron, the Korach and his rebellion, and from Shevet Shimon. These were three tribes which says Meya Simcha were exempt. They 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 had a certain proximity to the higher echelons of, uh, of government in Mitzrayim, and they were freed of the Abdus, Shimon, Levi, and Ruven. Rabbi Simcha brings there that it seems that they were more vulnerable. They were more vulnerable, and therefore had to be protected that they wouldn't have survived the the golos as the others did and therefore there's a need to be meyachas them uh, especially and the, the levy breaks out of that ruvain will wind up taking in avrayaldain there's a certain reduction of his Kedusha, says Omer Simcha. And uh, Shimon is going to be Zimri from the tribe of Shimon. Levi, there's a redemption and an upgrading through the extraordinary act of heroism of Pinchas, and that will catapult the, the energies of, uh, of Levi to Myla rather than Chesaron and fuel that and energize that for the future. 
a new a new dimension of kedusha, the willingness to to go and to to take that risk. And Yitz Hashem will talk about that more when we get to Parshas Pinchas. And yet, what's the significance during this period of time that? All of the those who did critique Moshe and Aaron, despite the credibility that they had, and since it's listed and recorded, those that did critique, it means that the body general of Kal Yisrael, the rank and file, supported Moshe Rabbeinu. Sometimes not vigorously enough. Sometimes they're taken to task for that, but they are in fact supportive. There was a model that would be set in place. And that model, says Ramea Simcha, would be that Klayasov was freed of the responsibilities of gaining a panosa. They had the man, they had the bear of Miriam, they had the, their clothes were tended to by the Ananiya Kovod. So they could devote themselves to learning and thinking they were a sophisticated, discerning community. And that would be the prototype for Klayasol throughout history. Because I'll talk about it in a number of places that there's a, a Rava makes the, the, the comparison that, that Los Lovey, just like not everybody made it out of, not only that, the majority did not make it out of Mitzrayim. The majority were left behind, the vast majority. But of those, only two made it into El Tisel, Yeshua and Koli. Says the Meir Simcha, there are times in history the Rebani Shalom will not, not hold back from wreaking havoc with nature, turning things inside and out as he did in Mitzrayim, and so it can be again in the Yemos HaMashiach. For two neshamas, that from a small spark, a conflagration, a sense of lighting the world, with awareness, with truth, can yet come. So the Maiminim, those, the faithful, the loyalists in history, should never be apologetic, should never be downhearted, should never be pessimistic, because Two people, all the Nisim of Mitzrayim took place that continued to report that in coming to El Tisol. And that will again be the situation that we're going to experience in Ikvis of the Mashiach. It'll be the minority, not the majority, that will be carrying with passion, with commitment with Ava, with love and devotion and loyalty, the the message of the Dvar Hashem of the word of the Ribanish Lalam. Do we have a responsibility to reach out and encourage, invite, be inclusive? Of course. And our model for education will always be the, the Haggadah. The Haggadah, before anything, we'll go into this in Yitz Hashem again in more detail, but the Haggadah is only, second only to the Chumash in sales being marketed, in Klajasol being translated into different languages. And it's the paradigm of the model, the prospectus for education. Provoke questioning 
and through provoking questioning, the questioner then begins to be involved, engaged, interested in the answer. That's our challenge. Optimism, the improbability of Jewish history as it has unfolded through the generations. Stunningly improbable, even had it not been predicted. Allah has come of a come, how much more so if it has all been anticipated and predicted. And from a small spark, two people, Yeshua and Kolev, will carry all of that message forward into El Yisrael. And that will be the denouement, the unraveling, the unfolding of Klai Yisrael's mission on its way to, to meet Mashiach. The Benishan should give us all the this sense of plugging in to this optimism, to this enthusiasm that the script is being vindicated not just month by month, day by day, minute by minute, that the sense of being the simonim, no schedule to fix the climax, but so many simonim that we are marching towards the, towards a climax in history. Hashem Yiten, that the, that we should all have that dip in to that sense of optimism should recognize that the we are privileged to be in a certain place at a certain time that gives us the opportunity to plug in to history very, 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 very tangibly and catapults us forward to Mietz Hashem, to be as a goyel b'mheira b'yameinu, omein. Yeshuas u'rufuas for all of Klal Yisrael and for the world at large. Thank you.